Hello students, I hope you're having a wonderful day. So what I'd like to do is go over a practice problem where you throw a baseball straight up into the air and then it slows down and it comes to a stop just a split second in time and then it falls back down and you catch it. And so you catch it at the same height that you threw it up. So let's go ahead and get started. I'll read the problem and we will create a diagram. I will identify some of the values in the diagram and then we will work through all three parts of the problem. So let's go ahead and get started here. A baseball is thrown straight up in the air with an initial velocity of 21 meters per second. The ball is caught the same distance above the ground. Part A, how high does the ball rise? B, how long does the ball remain in the air? And C, what is the velocity of the ball when you catch it? So what let's do first is draw a simple diagram. So right here, this is where the ball starts. This is you. I'll draw the ground here. That's our static surface. You throw the ball up and it comes to a stop right here. Okay, so I'm going to call this the initial velocity in the y direction. This is 21 meters per second. Up here, this is the final velocity or the velocity at maximum height. So I'm going to write max height here. Now, the time it takes. Here, let's start with the change in displacement. Let's say delta D, the change in the baseball's displacement to maximum height. We don't know what that is yet, but we know that the units will be in meters. And then we have the time interval, delta T, to maximum height. Now, one thing that we really need to talk about here is even though our initial velocity vector is pointed in the positive y direction, the acceleration vector is pointed in the negative y direction. So what's going to happen is as soon as the ball is released from your hand, since the acceleration vector is pointing in the opposite direction, the ball will slow down, it will come to a stop, and it will accelerate back down to the ground and, and then you're going to catch it at the same height that you released it. So part A, how high does the ball rise? So what we're going to do is we're going to use the base equation final velocity squared is equal to initial velocity squared plus 2 times our acceleration multiplied by the final displacement of the ball. Now what I want to do is use this equation but I'm going to adapt this equation to our situation. So the final velocity is the velocity at maximum height. So V sub F max height squared is equal to the initial velocity in the y direction squared. We have that here, the initial velocity in the y direction. We're gonna square that value plus two times the acceleration of the baseball is the acceleration due to gravity identified by lowercase g multiplied by the final displacement to maximum height. Okay, so what we want to do is isolate the final displacement to maximum height. So looking at this equation here, we have an understood plus sign right here, the initial velocity in the y direction. We have an understood plus sign. So what we're going to do is subtract that from both sides of the equal sign. So this is going to give me final velocity at maximum height squared minus the initial velocity in the y direction squared is equal to two times the acceleration due to gravity multiplied by the final displacement, which is the maximum height. Okay, the next step here is, remember, we're trying to isolate maximum height here. So 
this is going to force us to divide by 2 times the acceleration due to gravity. So when I divide by 2g on both sides of the equal sign, this is going to give me the displacement to maximum height is equal to the final velocity at maximum height squared minus the initial velocity in the y direction squared divided by 2 times the acceleration due to gravity. Okay? So at this point, we can start plugging in values because we've isolated the variable that, uh, I'm sorry, we have isolated final displacement and maximum height. Okay? So <clears throat> this is going to equal the final displacement. I'm sorry, the final velocity at maximum height up here, we have identified that this is zero meters per second. And when we square this value, zero squared, that's zero. So this guy goes to zero. But we still have minus initial velocity in the y direction squared. But according to the order of operations, we're required to square this value before we distribute the negative in there. So what I want to do is leave the negative, and I have initial velocity in the y direction squared, so 21 meters per second. And we're gonna square that value divided by two times the acceleration due to gravity. This is negative 9.8 meters per second squared. Okay, so let's take out our calculator here. So I have 21 meters per second squared. So 21 squared is 441. So I have a negative 441. Not only are we squaring the numerical value, we're squaring the unit value. So meters per second times meters per second is meters squared per second squared. We're going to divide this by 2 times negative 9.8 meters per second squared. That's going to be negative 19.6 meters per second squared. So let's go ahead and divide here. This is going to give me 22.5. So our displacement to maximum height is equal to 22.5. Now, we've taken care of the numerical value here. Let's take a look at the unit value. So in my numerator, I have meters squared per second squared divided by meters per second squared. So whenever we divide fractions, it's like multiplying by the inverse of the denominator. So I have meters squared per second squared times the inverse of the denominator, second squared divided by meters. So immediately, we can see that our second squared cancels. Then one of our meters cancels. And this leaves us with units of meters. OK, so what I'm going to do is write that answer over here. So the displacement to maximum height is equal to 22.5 meters. And it's positive. And that's important because remember, displacement is a vector. So a vector shows both magnitude and direction. And so we have a positive displacement. So the displacement is in a positive y direction. OK? All right, so I'm running out of room. I'm going to erase this here. OK, next, let's take a look at part B. Part B. How long does the ball remain in the air? So what I want to do is use the base equation for acceleration. Acceleration is equal to the change in velocity divided by the change of time. So I'm going to rewrite this, expand the numerator. Acceleration is equal to final velocity minus initial velocity divided by delta t. That's our time interval. Now. We're going to use this equation, but what I want to do is adapt this equation to 
our specific situation. So I'm going to add some subscripts here. Our acceleration is the acceleration due to gravity, identified by lowercase g. Our final velocity in this situation is the final velocity. This is the velocity at maximum height. So v sub f sub max height minus our initial velocity. Well, our initial velocity in the y direction And we're going to divide this by our time interval to maximum height, which we've drawn that on our picture here. So delta t sub max height. OK, so part b, how long does the ball remain in the air? Well, I really want to kind of pause here and talk about what this value here represents, delta t to maximum height. So our time to maximum height is from when you release the baseball to when it just momentarily comes to a stop, okay? So this is not the total time. What this question is asking for is the total time. So how long does the ball remain in the air? I'm going to call this delta t total because right here we're only solving for half the time. So what I want to do is solve for half the time and then we're going to come back and we're going to solve for this, okay? Now the first step here is to multiply by delta t at maximum height on both sides of the equal sign and then we are going to divide by the acceleration due to gravity on both sides of the equal sign. And this will give me delta t to maximum height is equal to the final velocity at maximum height minus the initial velocity in the y direction divided by the acceleration due to gravity. Now, at this point, what we need to do is make a prediction. And we need to think about, hey, should our value for time be positive or negative? Well, we know that time always has to be positive, okay? So if we wind up with a negative value, we have a big problem, okay? So this is just a reality check that we need to be thinking about here. So my final velocity at maximum height You've already identified that this is zero meters per second. So you throw the ball up at 21 meters per second. Our acceleration vector is in a negative direction. So it slows the ball down until it comes to a stop. Okay? So velocity at maximum height, this is zero. Boom. Goes to zero. We don't need to mess with it anymore. So what I have is negative initial velocity in the y direction, 21 meters per second, divided by acceleration due to gravity. This is negative 9.8 meters per second squared. Okay, so I have a negative 21 meters per second divided by negative 9.8 meters per second squared. So grab your calculator, let's do this together. 21, negative 21, divided by a negative 9.8 gives me a positive 2.143, okay? And let's take a look at the units here. So this is my numerical value, the time to maximum height. So in the numerator, I have meters per second we're dividing this by meters per second squared. When we, when we divide fractions, it's like multiplying by the inverse of the denominator. So I have meters per second times second squared over meters. We can immediately see that our meters cancel and one of our seconds cancels. So one of our seconds leaving us with units of seconds. So over here for part B, the time to max height 
is 2.143 seconds. Okay, now we're not done with part B. I'm just gonna put a dotted box around this guy because we need this value. We need this calculated value, okay? Remember, the question is really asking how long does the ball remain in the air? And we're talking about total time. So, we know that the acceleration due to gravity is constant. So, the ball has a negative acceleration right here, so the ball slows down to a stop, and then it accelerates at the same rate that it slowed down. So, the time that it takes to reach maximum height is the exact time that it takes to fall back down and you catch it at the same height. So we can come up with an equation. We can say delta T subtotal, so the total time that the ball is in the air is equal to two times delta T to maximum height. <clears throat> so this is going to be two times our calculated value here, which you have 2.143 seconds. So delta T total is going to be 4.286 seconds. So this is the total time that the baseball is in the air. Okay, so this is the answer to part B. Delta T total, 4.286 seconds. Okay, all right, now let's take a look at part C. What is the velocity of the ball when you catch it? Okay, so remember that the acceleration due to gravity is constant, so the ball slows down at the same rate that it accelerates back down to where you catch it. So, our final velocity when you catch it, I'm gonna put a point here, final velocity in the y direction, and this is going to be a negative 21 meters per second, okay? Now, what I want to do is, let's prove this. Let's, uh, let's use math and prove that this value will be a negative 21 meters per second. So, I'm going to erase this. Let's free up some room here. All right, so what we can do is use final velocity squared is equal to initial velocity squared plus two times our acceleration times our final displacement, okay? So final velocity right here, I'm going to say final velocity where you catch the ball squared is equal to the velocity at maximum height. And we have to square this value too, plus two times the acceleration due to gravity this is identified by lowercase g times final displacement. And this is going to be the maximum height. So it falls, it reaches maximum height and then it falls back down. So we've calculated this value. So I'm just going to use that subscript for maximum height since we've already calculated that to be 22.5 meters, okay? So, we have final velocity, where you catch the ball squared, is equal to the velocity at maximum height. Well, right here, our velocity is zero meters per second, okay? So, zero meters per second squared plus two times the acceleration due to gravity which is a negative 9.8 meters per second squared times our displacement. So we, we're starting out here now, and then the ball falls 
22.5 meters. And remember, displacement is a vector, so we're, we must show both direction and magnitude. So minus 22.5 meters, okay? Now, this starts off pretty easy because we know zero meters per second squared is zero. This guy goes to zero, so we don't need to mess with it anymore. So, final velocity, when you catch the ball squared is equal to, let's grab our calculator. I have two times negative 9.8 meters per second squared is so negative 19.6 meters per second squared times a negative 22.5 meters. So I get 441. Now let's take a look at our units. I have meters per second squared times meters. So meters per second squared times meters, and we can write this algebraically as meters over one. Meters times meters is meters squared. Second squared times one is second squared. So what we're left with is meters squared per second squared. Now what we need to do is we need to get rid of this squared value on the left-hand side of the equal sign. How we're going to do that is to take the square root of both sides of the equal sign. Remember what you do to one side, you have to do to the other. So the square root of this value squared will eliminate that square root and squared. This will give us the final velocity that you catch the ball is equal to the square root of 441. And this gives us 21. We're taking the square root of the numerical value and the square root of the unit value. So the square root of meters squared per second squared is meters per second. Now, one thing that I do want to point out here is that velocity is a vector. It's not a scalar. Velocity is a vector. And so that means that the vector shows both magnitude and direction, okay? So this 21 meters per second well, the vector arrow is pointing down in a negative y direction. So at this point, you could show a vector arrow down, or you could write the word down, or you could write negative y direction. You can do any of that that shows the direction. That is correct. Or you could simply put a negative sign on that to show that the direction is in the negative y direction. So that will be correct as well. I'm a fan of the negative sign in front of the value to show direction. So what we have for part C, the final velocity that you catch the ball is negative 21 meters per second. Okay, well, I hope uh, solving this problem together has helped you today. And like always, if you have any questions at all, please call me or email me, or you can send me a message through Canvas, and I will be more than happy to help you out. So I hope you have a wonderful day.